come to order, it is 7 p.m. Uh, we do have a quorum. Everyone is here for our September the 25th uh, regular council meeting. In just a minute, I'll ask everyone to stand. We'll be led in an opening prayer by Chief Carroll, and then be led in our pledges to the American flag and the Texas flag uh, by Councilmember Kirch. Would you please stand? Everyone, please pray with me. Lord, we thank you so much for today, the, for the many blessings that you have given us, God. God, we thank you for wisdom, uh, and we ask for that tonight. We ask for uh, you, your protection, Lord, over all the volunteers that volunteer their time, Lord, and for uh, all those that are out there protecting us tonight. Uh, we pray for your protection of them. God, we just ask that um, that you point this city or this town in the right direction, Lord, in the town, uh, in the direction that you want it to go, not in our direction, but in your direction, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Tim? I pledge allegiance to, to the flag. flag. United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. You may be seated. It is time for citizens' presentations. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the council on any matter, whether or not it's posted on the agenda. The council is not permitted to take action on or discuss any presentations made to the council at this time concerning an item not listed on the agenda. The council will hear presentations on specific items prior to the council addressing those items. You may speak up to four minutes or a time limit determined by the mayor or presiding officer. To speak during this item, you must complete the speaker's form that includes the topics of your statement. Topics of presentation should be limited to matters over which the council has authority. Holly, did anyone sign up to speak? No. Anyone in the audience that wish to speak at this time? All right, seeing no one wishing to, we will move on to announcements and reports. Item number one, receive Acting Town Manager Phillips update and provide input regarding the following. Byron Nelson High School homecoming parade, uh, fright lights, and national night out. Jonathan, you have the floor. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, just a reminder that tomorrow evening, uh, beginning at 6.15 p.m., the Byron Nelson uh, High School Homecoming Parade happens uh, here in town, begins at Medlin Middle School. Um, and also a reminder for additional resources, residents can point to our website. Um, we did want to make a note that I think there's a little bit of confusion out, um, either online or, or uh, through communications. Um, the PD is going to be closing the intersections, but only as the parade moves through. So traffic will continue to operate through the para parade route until the parade mo moves through those intersections. So uh, for additional information, again, please contact the website or, or social media. Fright Lights, um, which is a, a contest open to TC residents, uh, begins October 1st and ends October 24th. Um, this is where the Parks and Rec staff uh, evaluate our uh, creativity in our neighbors for the spookiest, most creative, and best overall theme. So we encourage all of our residents to participate. Winners will be announced on social media October 25th. Lastly, uh, a reminder that October 2nd is the National Night Out here in Trophy Club. Um, Trophy Club celebrates this with block parties, cookouts, and visits from our police and fire. So we encourage our neighbors to participate in that. Be happy to answer any questions. Council, anybody have any questions about those items? I do about the parade. I think most of the confusion um, is uh, turn barrier, the highlands being completely blocked off. So that's true. It was yes. Or it for, is. but just as it goes through, so a roughly a time estimate for that, because people are. I think that's the most we've been hearing about. Uh, roughly, the entire parade will be 90 minutes. I think that's approximately the number of folks that we have and considering the normal pace, approximately 90 minutes. Um, but as Jonathan just mentioned, you know, we'll, we'll only inhibit traffic um, when the parade is in full swing. So we'll try to accommodate the traffic as best as possible. I understand completely, it is rush hour. If people want to come and go as they normally do, I also have put a high priority on safety for our young people especially the children in and around the parade who like to approach the floats, things like that. So high priority is on, on the kids and the community, the pedestrians that are gonna be in the street, and that's where our emphasis is. 
Okay, yeah, I think the only question was usually there's some sort of alternate <coughs> routing, but this year there's not. Correct? Again, yes. Yeah. The okay. priority was placed on safety. Well, I floor. understand that. Sure. Mm -hmm. All right, anybody else? Ryan? Yeah, so so how is the route? I'm sorry, to, I don't want to extend this topic any longer, but how, how is the parade different than before, than previous years? Just to cut through the turn barrier. Yeah, previous years there was a, a, a span approximately a quarter mile long from uh, Durango mm -hmm. and Trophy Club up to Galloway of where traffic flowed mm -hmm. during the parade. Okay. Uh, yeah. We are locking down that circle uh, so that traffic's not gonna flow and, and thus nobody's jeopardized when they get in or on the street. Right. Um, but people in Turnberry would still have the option after one of the or one of the uh, one of the intersections opens up to go out through Galloway up to the other end of Trophy Club Drive and then come to Bobcat from the east side, right? We'll accommodate no. traffic prior to the parade getting to that point, but once it starts and is blocked, it'll be locked down until the completion. That well, is or when that traffic, when that intersection clears. Okay, when well, the last co float or car goes through, then yes, sir. Gonna, yes, sir. they could go a different direction. Yes, sir. A, but an alternate direction. No. So for about an hour and a half, if you live in that area, you cannot get in or out of your house, period, from what I understand. And that's, we've been publicizing that for yeah. a week, yeah. Well, duly noted, it's a surprise to me. Um, we'll see how it goes this year, I guess. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anybody else? All right, we'll move on. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. All right, we are down to the consent agenda. All matters listed on the consent agenda are considered to be routine by the town council and will be enacted by one motion. There will not be a separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed, the consent agenda, and will be considered separately. We have items two through seven. Does anyone wish to remove any of the items two through seven? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. I make a motion to approve it. Consent agenda items two through seven. Second. So I have a motion by Lamont, a second by Jensen. All in favor, show your hands. All opposed, same sign, it is unanimous. Item two, consider and take appropriate action regarding the town council regular session minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, I just read the things <laughs> we approved. You wanna pre-approve those? No, <laughs> sorry. All right. Uh, it is 7.07. PM, and we will enter into a public hearing for item number eight. Conduct a public hearing relative to the service and assessment plan for authorized services, emergency services for the Trophy Club Public Improvement District number one, the Highlands of Trophy Club, the proposed assessment row, and the levy of special assessments against the property in PID number one and matters contained in the proposed ordinance. This is ordinance 2018-23. Does anyone wish to speak on this item? Is there a representative from David Tossig and Associates here? Uh, yes. Did you want to say anything? Um, I, I can. Why don't you come to the microphone, state your name and your address, okay. and we'll see if anybody has any questions that you can help us with or any statements you'd like to make. So okay. please state your name. Uh, my name is Patrick Boykin. Uh, I work for David Tossig and Associates. Um, we are the administrators for the uh, public improvement districts, um, the one and uh, services district two. Um, happy to answer any questions uh, as they are received. Yeah. All right, Council, you have any questions of uh, Patrick for this? Any citizens wishing to ask a question in reference to this? Hearing no one or seeing no one seeking the chair, Patrick, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Mayor. We will close the public hearing at 7.09 and move into regular session. Uh, first item is recognition of Dennis Sheridan for his service that he provided to the town of Trophy Club. And so Dennis, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to address us. I'll give other members that have served on PNZ a chance and council a chance uh, to make any comments if they'd like to and then we have a presentation for you. So Dennis, sure. you have the floor. Um, thank you, sir. Dennis Sheridan, One Hill Press Court Trophy Club. Was not prepared. I normally have notes. Uh, I want to thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank all the council people for um, listening to us and um, helping uh, guide us uh, as a town. 
I want to thank all the P&D people who have, uh, commissioners who have uh, donated their time and their effort to this town. Most of them are in the back here. Um, I want to thank the staff um, for their uh, help in um, establishing. Um, and um, I'm glad I had the opportunity to serve uh, in this capacity. It's been a pleasure for me. Thank you. Dennis, you've served for 18 years on PNZ. So I was trying to think what would have been the first kind of actions you took on PNZ. Do you remember? Um, most of the PNZ stuff was um, uh, back in the um, what the early 2000s was uh, had to do more with um, Hogan's Glen and adjusting property lines and doing some flat work. Uh, that was the original, and this is before the Highlands, so this would have been parts of Hogan's Glen and parts of um, uh, just beyond uh, Harmony Park. So uh, there might have been some Meadow Ridge work? Yes. And um, the Knoll? The uh, the Knoll was one of them, yep. and uh, that wasn't uh, there at that time. So we did some platting work and uh, some of the original uh, work with Paul Spain, uh, the, one, of the one of the developers of uh, the Knoll. And um, so and were you on PNZ when they approved uh, ordinances that changed uh, setbacks for gas wells? Um, well, you're bringing, you're bringing up a lot of memories. Um, yes, we did, uh, we did original, um, uh, uh, the zoning and creating the zoning for the gas wells. Uh, not just the platting and, and, and things like that, but the actual ordinance came through PNZ. Uh, we were lucky to have Gene Hill, uh, who was a gas, uh, gas and oil person, um, guide us at, in that. Um, but that was one of the original um, issues that was very controversial at the time. Yes, it uh, was. And, and uh, how we did that. And who I was one of the citizens that caused most of the trouble for PNZ back in those days? <laughs> um, your see. wife here? Um, oh, no, no. I, I just <laughs> 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 no, Mayor, you've been involved in this town for a long time. <laughs> yes. Are you saying that I caused you trouble back on No, the no, I, I, just, I just, I, I was, I, I thought that was spinning a good comment. Um, <laughs> but um, we've uh, had some good ups and downs throughout the years. Okay. And um, I think we've, uh, uh, Trophy Club has turned out to be a fantastic place to live. And I'm glad I'm here. Well, Dennis, we very much appreciate your dedication of 18 years uh, serving the citizens of Trophy Club. I suspect that 18 years ago our population was was maybe 6,000 at that point would be my guess. No, I don't think it was that long, that much. Okay. But the, the, the other thing is the Loop Road was under con con consideration. The Loop Road was under, <laughs> did you say the Loop Road was under construction? Is that what you said? Consideration. consideration. Oh, consideration. <laughs> yes, that was a uh, hot yeah. topic yes, of discussion. Was, you know, Yes, I understand. and that was also discussed at my interview uh, with Barry Engelberg. Okay. okay, so you've seen a lot. Yes. Well, we're glad that you have been here. So um, if you want to kind of stay around right up front there, so we are going to present you with something in a minute, but anybody on, that's been on the PNZ like to say a few words? Yes, please come forward, state your name and address, and... It's a roast. <laughs> it's a roast. <laughs> we like it. I'm Luann Oldham, 2535 Roseville Drive. I was honored to work with Dennis for three years on PNZ. I've got to tell you, his dedication, his research, he never came unprepared. He was meticulous in his workup. He researched. He wasn't caught not understanding the ordinance. He read them. He practically memorized the PDs, and it was an honor to work with him. Um, he has seen many town councils come and go. He survived them all. Um, and I think he's to be commended for being able to work with just a multiplicity of different councils and city, sitting um, members and mayors. Anyway, thank you, Dennis. It was an honor. Thank, thank you, you Lorraine. Anyone else? Council, would you? Oh, okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. 
Hi, I'm Michael Pipkins, uh, 2827 Exeter Drive, and I'm the vice chair for, uh, at the moment for PNZ. I just want to say Dennis has been an inspiration to everyone on, on the commission. Um, just like Luann said, he, he is he's aware of every single thing that happens in this town. He is constantly prepared. He has been just a, sh a shining light for everyone involved, and, and I am immensely grateful for him for bringing me in and showing me the ropes as well. So, Mike, thank you. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> uh, anybody on council that would like to speak? I see people who have asked to speak. Ryland Rowe, you're first. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, you all need to understand just the level of, uh, of work that Dennis has put in, and, and Ms. Oldham is exactly right. PNZ is a unique board in that it offers significantly more material for members to review and familiarize themselves with than, than any other board that we solicit volunteers for, and, and it's not even close. And uh, Dennis, like, like Ms. Oldham said, he's always prepared, but has a very firm grasp of the subject matter, and it's important not only for what he contributes as an individual, but everyone around him starts to learn by being a part of those uh, by being a part of those discussions I've learned a great deal from you Dennis just in talking and hanging out between meetings and at meetings and stuff and I appreciate I'm happy to have gotten to know you it's a privilege uh, I would hope that all of our other citizen volunteers find a way to carve out even half as much of an impact as what Dennis has been able to do for us and if they do they can feel really good about the service that they've uh, that they've done for trophy club um, 18 years is a long time. Uh, I had hair and no gray in my beard and couldn't buy beer when Dennis was appointed to the PNZ here. <laughs> and now I'm bald and have two children. I've owned two homes here. Uh, that gives you an idea of how long uh, he's served the Trophy Club and uh, we appreciate it a great deal. And um, like I said, Dennis, it's a privilege to have gotten to know you and I really enjoyed working with you. And uh, I hope you're still available for questions and bouncing ideas off of, even though you're gonna retire from Thank us. you very much, Rob. <laughs> Appreciate yes, it. Yes, uh, to PNZ members and to council and to staff, uh, if there's something I can contribute, I'd like to continue to contribute. Thank you. Uh, Greg Lamont. Uh, I consider you a close personal friend. And uh, besides the research, you always ask questions. And that's how we all learn. Uh, you've taught us a lot about construction and I hope you do stay with us and we can call upon you for your expertise and advice. Thank you for your service. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Craig. Eric? I got to know Dennis. Uh, we were one of the crazy people that would stay at those late night council meetings while they'd be in exec session. We'd sit out there and just in the foyer, just visit. And uh, I really enjoyed those talks that we had for that time. Thank you. You're a servant. Your husband's a servant. Always has been, I bet. So thank you, sir. Thank you, Eric. Alicia? I just want to thank you for your service. 18 years is an extraordinarily long time, and we certainly do appreciate it. And thank you for everything you've done for the town. We appreciate it. Thank you, Alicia. So I was going to make a few remarks also. So uh, I'll go. You can go last. I, <laughs> I can go last. OK. He took his off. At the, at I, I tried to put my name last electronically, then you? Philip took his off and then put it back on, so he would be last. So, so, so I think uh, I think December twenty first, two thousand was your first meeting, and uh, at least that's what I I, I I believe so, yes, sir. And so, uh, your your first agenda item was discussion regarding a request to amend PD thirteen, the village at Trophy Club, to allow for less restrictive signage criteria for Track One. <laughs> We're still talking about signage. Had I known. <laughs> no more friends. Probably approved it, and this <laughs> council would have yeah, I mean, Let me take have, this uh, remark back. back. Hold on. <laughs> no, uh, I, Dennis, uh, you, he you particularly asked, called me up and asked me for some guidance on the, stat, on the uh, ordinances, and I have to have them in writing, so we do have to identify the ordinance by 2013, 2011, or 2009. And then you have to come back in with the computerized version that's accurate. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Philip. Dennis is, uh, is somebody that I, I can call, and he, first thing he says, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, and I consider Dennis a, a really good friend. Uh, I enjoy visiting with him. We, uh, we, we, we partake in things. <laughs> and you don't want to ever go to a restaurant with him because if you say, uh, would you like a drink? Oh, yes. And it just keeps going and he keeps partaking and you keep buying. <laughs> But no, Dennis is a, Dennis is a great guy. He's, he's going to be truly missed. Um, I think that for this council, he stepped in at a moment where we really needed him. Uh, it, it's, it was a little contentious, and I think that he stepped in and brought stability to PNC for us. And he brought uh, stability to this council uh, in the decisions that he passed on. You could always call him. And I, I'm sure that even beyond tonight, I'll be able to call him and he'll research, just like Lou Ann said. Uh, he is prepared, he knows the history, he can tell you about things and he'll give you your, his honest opinion. Whether he, you agree with him or not, he's gonna tell you exactly what he thinks the ordinance uh, says and his interpretation of it. And, uh, and so I, I just, I appreciate everything that you've done for me and for this council. You've, you've certainly been a true asset to us. Thank you, Phil. Tim. Uh, I just want to take a minute and say uh, thank you for your service. And um, you are um, the consummate volunteer. So you, you set up uh, a place where we should all aspire to be. Uh, personally, I think Philip Schaffner has a poster of you in his living room. <laughs> what is he, but, uh, but honestly, I, I mean, the way you conduct yourself uh, the homework you do, the way that you stay out of the local politics um, is really something to look up to, and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim. So then I will make some, uh, some final remarks. Uh, Lou and I appreciate the word meticulous. Uh, that is for sure. Um, one of the things that I appreciated very much about you was the way you conducted yourself when council was gonna make an ultimate decision and maybe you felt what some particular way on a decision, you would express how you felt and you would always kind of end it with, but it's your decision. And uh, so a very professional way of saying, um, here's my ideas, here's my thoughts, but at the end of the day, I understand y'all are gonna make that decision. Um, but the other side of that is you always gave us those options and whether uh, it agreed with an ordinance or disagreed or with what someone was doing, at least you told us how you felt and why you felt that way. And that was always important is uh, you're trying to debate an issue and make the best decision you can. You need someone who will speak their mind and, and hold true to what uh, their calling is to do for that. And so just very much appreciate all of that. I've had many fond memories over the years, even before I was an elected official uh, that I could come address you. So at this time, I have a small token of our appreciation that I'll present you with, and you can place it hopefully in, the, in your home. Presented to Dennis Sheridan with gratitude for his commitment and leadership during his 18 years of service the town of, to the Town of Trophy Club, Planning and Zoning Commission 2000 to 2018, and the Planning and Zoning Chairman 2014 through 2018. Let's give him a hand, everybody. Thank you very much. All right, item number uh, 10, recognition of Mark D. Chambers, Jr. for his service that he provided the town 
um, as our municipal judge. Mark, I never knew you were a junior, nor did I know your initial was D in the middle, so, but have known you for years. Um, Mark, if you'd like to say a few words, we'll let you speak. You know, it's, it's always dangerous to ask a lawyer if he wants to speak, but since I'm not getting paid by the word, it's probably safe. I don't know how I can follow that with Dennis. I mean, the, the hours of blood, sweat, and tears on the nights, I mean, what he did, you know, my service to the town pales in comparison to that. Um, and I had prepared remarks, but the uh, teleprompter company failed me, so I guess I'm just gonna have to <laughs> wing it. Um, no, but seriously, um, I just can't express the gratitude sufficiently uh, for having been here uh, and sat on the bench for so many years. Every two years, uh, reappointed by the then existing council, uh, and I, I so appreciate the, the, the confidence and the trust placed in me over those years. Uh, and I just hope that uh, uh, that uh, the end result was was justice perceived and in reality uh, for both the city and the officers and also the community. But uh, I made a lot of good friends here, and it's uh, with a lot of mixed emotions that I that I leave and, and uh, give the place to somebody else. It's somebody else's turn now. Thank you, Judge. I think I will always refer to you as Judge, if that's okay. <laughs> but maybe Mark will slip out every night. Mark is good. Yeah. And so, uh, anyone in the audience wish to speak? Yes, Chief. Um, <clears throat> I just wanna say thank you, Judge, for everything that you've done for this town. You've treated the citizens with respect, firmly, but with respect, as they've come in front of you, as you sat here and in, in the old building. But as um, my time as Chief, getting to know you, and, and, and when actually when I first got here, we sat and had a little conversation about what our roles were and our responsibilities, and your understanding of firearms and snakes, two, <laughs> different, two different things. I enjoy the firearms <laughs> conversations, but not the snakes. <laughs> so if everybody doesn't know, he loves snakes. He's a snake handler and oh all that stuff. So if we, he helped us with the ACO program too. So, but thank you for what you've done for this town and um, we wish you the best in your endeavors forward. Thank you very so, much. Thank you, Judge. Okay. All right, uh, so I have Greg Lamont who wishes to speak. Uh, Judge, we were longtime neighbors before you moved to the Highlands, uh, have many good conversations. I attended a couple of those court appearances. You have to have the patience of a saint and just sit there with a straight face on some of these things. Uh, so I hope you enjoy your new leisure time and I wish you all the best of luck. Thank, Thank you for your service. It's, it was truly remarkable. All right, David Dodd, wish to speak. I just say, uh, kind of continue on to what continue on to what Greg said, uh, it may come as a shock. People aren't really happy when they get to court. <laughs> and so you have a whole room full of unhappy people. I always appreciated his demeanor and professionalism and how he handled everything and got everything through. And a lot of people just want to be heard and have their day in court and he gave it to everybody. And that's all it is. Rylan? Judge Chambers, just wanna thank you for 21 years is a very long time. As we just said with Dennis for 18 years, it's also, I think, a, a, a huge uh, a, a huge privilege to have somebody who actually lives in the, in the town that he serves as with some municipal judges. That's not always the case. I, I appreciate that, um, uh, that we've had that privilege with you. Um, Luckily, I was, I've yet, despite having lived here nearly 14 years, I've yet to have sat in court as an unhappy person and hope to keep it that way. <laughs> um, but uh, my mother is a court clerk, municipal court clerk, and um, I, ran into, I ran into our former court clerk, Terry Neal, shortly after you uh, had, had uh, let it be known that you were going to, that you were going to move on. And um, she said to me, um, she said, Oh, I'm just really gonna miss Judge Chambers. And I said, well, I've learned, because my mama told me that the court clerk's opinion matters. So if uh, clearly if she approved, then you were doing a good job. And so I just wanna appreciate you and thank you for your service. Thank you. Judge, thank you so very much for the 21 years of dedication uh, to fairness and justice and trophy club. As I told you a little while ago back there, I've never had to appear before you, just like Ryland but I also never served on a jury where you presided. So shucks, I didn't get to do that either. Um, but uh, I've enjoyed um, the professionalism you have shown uh, and the service to this town. And I think as the chief said, the fairness that you gave citizens is important in a town like Trophy Club uh, 
when they have particular issues. So thank you very much. I have a small appreciation for you too. We're gonna to go back to the flag. Item number 11, case AP-18-001, section 11, lots 1364R and 1365R. Consider and take appropriate action regarding a request for approval for an amended plat uh, for Trophy Club, section 11, lots 1364R and 1365R, located south of Meadowbrook Lane and approximately 85 feet west of Rockwood Drive. Now, Ms. Payne, you have the floor. Yes, good evening. Um, the applicant owns both lots 1364 and 1365 and is proposing to move the common property line five feet to the east to increase the size of lot 1365, which is vacant land, that lot on the left. Um, the current and requested width of each lot complies with the 80 foot minimum requirement of the R10 zoning regulations. Uh, there is a vacant 10 foot drainage and utility easement centered on the common property line. Um, in order for the easement to remain between properties as required by the MUD, um, the proposed amended plat establishes a five foot drainage and utility easement on the east side of the new lot line and abandons five feet of an existing drainage and utility easement on the west side of the current common lot line. On September 6th, BNZ uh, unanimously recommended approval. Staff recommends approval as well and the applicant and I are available for questions. Thank you. Eric, you have the floor. Motion to approve case AP-18-001. Second. So we have a motion by Councilmember Jensen, a second by Councilmember Lamont for approval. Any further discussion? Uh, Rod and Rowe. Um, I just wanna um, point out that we've also discussed a related matter um, to this relative to our future agenda items. And Mr. Parnell actually brought it to my attention, and I thought it was a really good, a really good thing to look into. Um, so I, I just want to, I just want to encourage staff to continue looking at that in addition to this, because obviously this is a unique situation since he's lucky enough to um, own both properties and could easily replat. Philip, is is this a situation where the town engineer would look at this and sign off on it? Did yes. He, okay, so the he town did. Engineer looks at all plats. Okay, that's what I was. Curious. All right, anybody else with questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those of approving case AP-18.001, show your hands. All opposed, same sign, it is approved. Item 12, consider take appropriate action regarding an ordinance fixing and levying municipal ad valorem taxes for the town for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2018 and ending September 30th, 2019 directing the assessment thereof and providing an effective date. It is ordinance 2018-24. And the chair would recognize Mayor Pro Tem Schaffner for a motion. Uh, the, the lovely motion that you have to make every year. Sorry about this. Uh, I make a motion to move that property taxes be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of 0.446442 per 100 valuation and approve ordinance number 2018-24, fixing and levying municipal ad valorem taxes for the town for the fiscal year beginning October 1st, 2018 and ending September 30th, 2019, directing the assessment thereof and providing an effective date. Today's Second. Date. All right. And sure. I, I, say, I say that because we have to say we're lowering the uh, tax rate, but the state requires us to say that we're collecting more taxes, so therefore we're right raising taxes. So there you go. All right. Uh, so, Philip, you have the floor. I mean, not 
Phillips. That's who had the floor. Phillips, <laughs> Phillips has the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I got the wrong person here. Okay. Uh, Mayor and Council, I'd be happy to answer any questions. This is the um, the uh, tax rate, which um, includes the half penny reduction that we mentioned at the last council meeting for the um, fiscal year 19 budget. <laughs> So I would like to mention, as Philip was pointing out, uh, that we are actually um, lowering the tax rate. And so council took action along with staff in the planning uh, that we are reducing the tax rate by half of a cent. So we're going down from 451442 to 446442 per hundred dollar valuation is the action that we are taking. And Eric, you had a comment. As a new member to the budget sub finance committee, uh, thank you, John. Uh, for your time and uh, getting getting the uh, the rate where we wanted it. Um, it's always nice to lower the rate. It would have been nice to go down another half cent, but um, unfortunately there are things that we do need to pay for and citizens do require a high level uh, in the town. And to do that, we our only source of revenue is this. And so um, thank you all for what you did. Thank you, Eric. All right, this is a roll call vote, and so uh, I will uh, call your name, Council, and you can tell me if you vote yes or no, or yay or nay in some fashion, show your support or lack thereof. I will start with Mayor Pro Tem Schaffner. Uh, yes. Alicia Fleury. Yes. Eric Jensen. Yes. Rylan Rowe. Yes. Tim Kurtz. Yay. Greg Lamont. Yes. One in every. Nick Sanders. Yes. It is uh, unanimous. It does carry. Uh, so on my behalf, uh, and as uh, it was pointed out, that we really appreciate staff's effort uh, to bring us this budget and at the same time allow us to begin to fund an important aspect of changing of what we're doing with uh, the people's money and that is setting aside money in the capital replacement fund. So I think that's really an exciting time for us. The first time that we've ever accomplished that as a town, and although there were reserves, this is now setting it aside specifically for purposes uh, for replacement of capital expenditures. So I really appreciate uh, all the staff's work and your leadership uh, as uh, in charge of finance to get this uh, budget done for us and help us through the process. Thank you very much. Anyone with council wish to make a comment? All right. Uh, well, you're not on the list, uh, so there you go. Well, <laughs> okay, we're moving on then. <laughs> <laughs> he can't make electronics work. I got it. Okay. No, I, I want to thank uh, Jonathan also. I, you, you stepped in at a moment. I mean that you know just uh, not not the greatest time to step into the budget process, but uh, you handled it professionally, and I think that uh, and and credit to to John as well because this was. The first time that I've ever gotten more information than I could ever possibly want, and uh, I didn't have to ask for anything, you provided everything, and so it was just a great uh, experience, great budget uh, cycle that we went through this time. So I appreciate uh, all of staff. I, I'm sure there's a lot more people that go into this. So. All right, thank you. Uh, so that item does carry, and we have set our tax rate. Item number 13. Consider and take appropriate action regarding a resolution of the Town Council approving the tax roll of Denton County Appraisal District and Tarrant County Appraisal District for 2018 and providing an effective date. Uh, Jonathan, you have any comments about this item? No, Mayor, I'm available for questions if you have any. Anyone wish to make a motion to approve resolution 2018-25? I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2018-25 approving the tax roll of Denton County or Denton Central Appraisal District and Tarrant County Appraisal District for 2018, effective September 25th, 2018. Second. Have a sec and I have a second from Flurry. All right, I have a motion and a second. Council, any discussion on this item? I see no citizens seeking the floor or anyone wishing to speak. We'll call for the vote. All those in favor of approving item 13, please show your hands. All opposed, same sign. It is unanimous. <coughs> item 14, consider and take appropriate action regarding an ordinance of the Town of Trophy Club, accepting and approving a service and assessment plan for authorized services for the Town of Trophy Club Public Improvement District Number 1 Emergency Services and an assessment role for the Town of Trophy Club Public Improvement District Number 1 
the Highlands of Trophy Club, making a finding of special benefit to the property in the district, levying special assessments against property and within the district, providing the payment for the assessments in accordance with law and providing an effective date. Uh, so, um, Jonathan, any comments? Mayor and Council, happy to answer any questions. Uh, again, this is for the emergency services portion of the PID, uh, and then Patrick with David Tossics and Associates is here as, as well, if you have any questions. This is a, a time when we do this that is confusing to citizens that live in the PID. They get this notice that says we're gonna levy this tax against them, and the reality is it happens every year. It's adjusted slightly uh, each year based on what's happening uh, with emergency services. So. It may go up and down just like the taxes of a citizen who lives in the mud goes up and down. And its intent is to try to equalize where everybody is paying their fair share of that portion of our budget. Uh, so I wish that it could be better. It's kind of one of those things and statements that are made like we are increasing the taxes, but we're not. We're just collecting more because there are more homes. And when we lower the rate, so appreciate, if you, anybody has any questions, we surely can try to help you understand that if you have questions about this assessment each year. All right, at this time, uh, I'm gonna recognize Mayor Pro Tem Schaffner for a motion. Uh, I make a motion to approve ordinance number 2018-23, accepting and approving a service and assessment plan for authorized services for the Town of Trophy Club Public Improvement District Number One Emergency Services and an assessment role for the Town of Trophy Club Public Improvement District Number One, the Highlands of Trophy Club, making a finding of special benefit to the property in the district, levying special assessment against property within the district, providing for payment of the assessments in accordance with law and providing an effective date today. Do you have a second? I'll second. Motion by Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Schaffner, seconded by Councilmember Rowe. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor, show your hands. All opposed, same sign. It does pass unanimously for Ordinance 2018-23. Uh, item number 15. Consider and take appropriate action regarding an ordinance amending Division Two Meetings of Rules of Procedure, Article 1.03 Town Council of Chapter 1, General Provisions of the Town of Trophy Club Code of Ordinances and providing an effective date. Uh, this is Ordinance 2018-25. Um, uh, Councilmember Lamont uh, placed this item on the agenda. It was after some discussion about um, uh, the rules of procedure that deal with abstention from a vote. And after this was placed on the agenda, uh, turns out that in our charter it clearly delineates that. Uh, so Council, at this time I don't see any uh, reason for taking an action here. Does anybody want to do anything with this? No. All right, we will then pass on without any action. Item 16, discussion of items for future agenda to include agenda items for consideration on the October 9th, 2018 council agenda and items from the town council future uh, items list. Specifically, uh, we bring up tonight item number six from the future agenda list, receive an update from staff and take appropriate action regarding the possibility of allowing attached oh. forward fencing garages. And Councilmember Barreau, place that. So at this time, uh, our town planner, Ms. Payne, will make a few comments about this. That's the quickest I've ever asked for an update and got, you guys are getting better every You're week. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it was like 10 minutes. Uh, Mayor and council staff is looking for direction tonight on whether, um, on whether the code should be revised to allow attached third car garages to face the street. Currently, detached garages can face the street if they are set back 45 feet from the front property line. The zoning ordinance contains many zoning districts that do not allow for attached front-facing garages and a few districts that do allow for it. Um, in addition, most of the planned developments do allow for attached front-facing third-car garages. Uh, any possible code changes will only affect straight um, zoned properties um, staff welcomes questions and direction. And I also provided um, a few pictures just to show, put a visual in your heads of what different garage configurations look like, which we know what they look like, but just to give you a little visual. Uh, a couple examples of houses where the garage does not face the street at all are these two. Um, there's an example of only the third car garage is facing the street. And this is the third and fourth garage is facing the street. The 
the initial two car garage is facing the side. Um, this is an example of a detached garage on the left facing the street. Uh, this is another detached garage. And then this is your, um, just the, the, they have a two car garage and it faces the street on these two examples. All right, so Rylan, you wish to speak? Yeah, um, my, well, the, the point that uh, the, the resident brought up to me when he asked me about this that got me thinking on this um, had to do with comparing like the ones you just showed in the, in the Highlands. Um, and, I, and I think that, I think that really the, the, the issue we wanna try and address is in similar situations with similar sized lots, people in those straight zoning districts R, R dash eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15, um, have potentially similar options when they have similar size configurations and, and lots and things of that nature. So my recommendation to you guys, as you look at what to bring to us to, and to PNZ, obviously we'd have to see it first, would be to, to allow um, only, um, only front facing garages on lot sizes that are no smaller than whatever the smallest is in the uh, in in the, in the uh, PD twenty seven in the Highlands, um, at least in the maybe not in like the Abbey Moore size lots, but in the more standard ten thousand square foot and up lots. Do, do you kind of understand where I'm headed with this? Like I, I don't necessarily think that we need to kill ourselves and try to do everything across the board because it may not apply, but there may be a good a, like a sweet spot where it makes sense on certain lot sizes that are on the larger end? Currently, um, R8 is one of those that the um, properties that are under, I believe it's 9,000 square feet, um, they can have a front facing garage, but the larger properties, they have to have a side facing and no front facing allowed. So that's kind of been the, the cutoff. The other districts that are straight up, they do allow for front facing. Um, the one with the largest minimum lot size is 8,000 and goes all the way down to 3,000. So. Yeah, so so I guess my my thought process would be that in the areas where we do allow attached, we try or we do allow detached to compare where we allow attached on similar size lots and try to come to some sort of equalization there. Because my, my general goal is just to ensure that we have, for the areas of town, which are many that weren't developed under a PD, that people down the road have, have um, f an equal ability to potentially build or remodel or add on, assuming they have this, the lot coverage to do so um, without being unnecessarily restrictive. So hey. I, I think, uh, hopefully that makes uh, some sense. Eric? Are you aware of any homeowner that's requested to add a attached third garage facing the street that's been denied? Yep. How recently? Um, in the, within the past month. Denied by who? Not here. Well, because that's it. something you would just get a building permit for. So it was denied by staff because in our ordinance, it doesn't allow for attached front facing So who would they go, who, what would be their next step? If they wanted to, they would go to ZBA. Were they, were they told to do that? No, but we also knew that we were coming forward with this. I told them that this was something, well, actually I would highly one recommend you send them to ZBA. One of them was uh, the gentleman that um, had the plat done. He came and asked y'all during the system presentation. Yeah. Yes. Who is that gentleman? Wes Cornell. Okay. Thank you, sir. So I've had his and I've had one other. And so knowing that I was coming to talk but, to y'all. I mean, did you did you not recommend to him? Because that we have the procedure to handle it, is ZBA. So did, was he recommended to go to ZBA? No, I didn't recommend it. That's we were, we were but that's it, that is our procedure. Yes. All right, so recommendation to staff. We have a procedure. We need to, the citizens say, hey, here's our procedure. I can't approve it, but here's what you gotta do. You gotta go to ZBA. I mean, that's. The reasoning for not do. doing that is because to go to ZBA, you have to have a hardship and he doesn't have a hardship. Is that true, David? You have to have a hardship? Uh, to get a variance, it's required that you have a hardship. Um, I can't say without looking at the facts whether he has one or not. I mean, on, on a case like this, I consider the slope on the side yard, whether you can make it to a side facing versus a forward facing. 
So what you're saying is this gentleman's only recourse is for us to do an amendment to an ordinance. He can't even apply to ZBA. I haven't seen anything. He can apply to ZBA. I don't know if he has a variance or not. All right. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna call the discussion. We've kind of gone past the purpose of item 16. The purpose of item 16 is to give direction to staff as related to coming back to how we would deal with what this suggestion was, uh, which dealt with forward-facing garages. And so uh, if that gentleman is here tonight, maybe you can discuss with him. If that gentleman is here, and I think he said he was, he's welcome to address us uh, during citizens' presentations at some times if he'd like to address that particular topic or if he has an opinion about this particular agenda item, which I think relates to what he's trying to do. So does that person, Mr. Parnell, wish to speak on this agenda item? All right, if you'll come state your name and your address. We have kind of this limited agenda item just to let you know that, so I might stop you. We're not really debating uh, what's right or wrong as much as we're placing them this, the item on the agenda and giving direction to staff as how would we would like them to proceed. And that proceed is, do you need to change something and bring it to council? And so I think what we're hearing from council is, what are your concerns? What are you trying to do to help us understand this? Uh, my name is Wes Parnell, 53 Meadowbrook, and I appreciate you at least discussing this. So to add a little bit of, of the reason I've got here is, is this house right here is a great example is I, I own some older houses in Trophy Club that eventually we're gonna be doing a lot of remodeling on that side and everything's pretty much built out. So I don't think we have to worry much about the two car forward facing garages because they're all built out not facing that way this was my main concern is is i guess i can bring a detached forward facing garage for the third and i agree it needs to meet the 45 foot setback the six foot off all, all those things that the pd has on the other side but the answer is they can't touch each other so you can hang your roofs over and you can have your walls but like this i mean so do i put gravel between them and it just looks, it just, it would look funkier to me than if you built it like it was built like that, where you come off the roof, you got one wall, and you still meet all these guidelines, but this person, I went and knocked on their door and said, hey, what's going on? They said, well, they wouldn't let me attach it. So this was, this is what I had to do. And so it's not gonna work for everybody because they won't have the room, but the people that do have the room, instead of saying, well, just hang it over, I think it would be smart to maybe look at, um, um, allowing it to attach. One last thing that would be great about this is, in this particular place, is they can't put a second story on here because it's not allowed. You can only have a loft. And so detached can't have a second story, attached can have a second story. So if you attach it, you're also adding all the square footage to the tax base because, uh, I mean, I, th I think that would also help. So that's another reason that you can't do attached. Last reason I would like to do this is I have that vacant lot now and I would like to apply to to build something like that's on the Highlands possibly. I, I mean, I may do a detached, but I'd like the, the option to do an attached. And so how do I do that? Do I go through, uh, I was told not to go that route, so this is where uh, I brought it. And so I'm not trying to change the PD. If I can go and take it to, I forget what it's called. Uh, ZBA. Uh, I will do that. Of so, so Anyway, I appreciate y'all listening to me and I'll, I'll take any hey, questions. Can I have one clarifying? So you, you're wait, wait one second, because I have Rylan here. Oh, no, you, I, no, I have something for Lisa. So you okay, go. so you'll go yeah. ahead. Then. I, I go just ahead. want to ask a question on, so you said detached cannot have two stories? Cannot. From what I've been told, it's a 20 foot peak and you can have a loft. Okay. So the top of it can only be 20 feet. You can have a loft, so you just can't have a loft. You can have a loft, yes sir. So. Don't look at my neighbor back there. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay. It depends on the zoning, right? Yeah. Rylan? Yeah, um, one additional thought um, for this. I, I, I think in the context we're talking about, I think it could be most likely, and you may find in some research that I'm wrong, but I, I think it's probably 99.9% .9 only single garage, single car garages. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think part of what we want to do is make sure we're appropriately limiting. Um, so that's just another thing is that I don't foresee this applying to anything aside from single car garages. All right, so does anybody else have a suggestion for direction of staff of how they bring that back to us? Council, anybody? Did you want to make a final comment? To verify, I guess just when you say single car, so like if you wanted to have a four car garage, the two, like she showed that picture, that would not 
that maybe not. I mean, they, you, they may they Most may find that there's ex anyway. examples of it, but um, my thinking on the size of the lots is it's probably it may only work on R15. I mean, because the the only zoning districts we'd be looking at at revising here are the are the what she called straight zoning, which is where they, there's not a PD, but there's zoning regulations, and it's basically just segmented by uh, minimum lot size, and so it's. 15, R, R10, where you are, is 10 or 11, it's minimum 10,000 square feet and on up, so. so. The four, I mean, the four I have, this would only work on one of them. Right. Like, everybody's, like, it's so specific, only gonna work on very few homes. But when it does, allow it and just to use that common wall instead of a button two together, yeah. that's all I'm saying. So what you're after is the common wall, common roof concept as opposed to a detached I think there's right. a place for the detached. I think that's great too. I mean, I think but what you're after like specifically is attached. Yes, sir. I think okay. there's a place for it. Yeah. All right. And, thank and you. I, I don't think that you want to limit too much on the zoning because there are certain cul-de-sac lots that may are be big enough. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> okay. Lisa, does that give you enough to kind of start on for us? Yes, I believe it does. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sir. All right. So we are down to our. Uh, meeting, proposed meeting agenda for October the 9th, uh, which is before you, uh, Council. Uh, and um, so I have a question about item six. It says, consider and take appropriate action regarding an ordinance amending division two meetings of rules of procedure 103, town council of chapter one, general provisions of the town of trophy club of ordinances and provide an effective date uh, that, I, yes, that comes off, right? Yes, sir. This the agenda was posted on Friday. Okay, yeah. that's that's what I thought. Okay, I just wanted to confirm that that does. Yeah, I just am trying to make sure. Um, so, uh, council, anything you would like to see added to this October 9th agenda that's not already listed there? It's a fairly light agenda. <laughs> well, it's a popular <laughs> month, isn't it? <laughs> it is a popular month. Lots of ordinances mm. and uh, proclamations. Right. All right, so uh, the other thing is I just might suggest to staff, I don't know if there's something that is on our uh, next couple of pages or something that y'all are working on that we could uh, have on this uh, next council agenda might be looked at. So I'll call your attention to pages 2082 and 2083 council. We have our future agenda list. And I think if I understood correctly, Item 12 would go off, is that right? That is uh, meetings, rules of procedure, yes. abstention, that yep. goes off. So Holly, that gets removed. And uh, I think we've done item six tonight, which is dealing with uh, allow attached forward facing garages. Well, you may want to leave it on there until we have, well, have an agenda item for action. I'm okay if, if that's all right with everybody. Yeah, I'd, that'd right. be my preference. We'll leave it on there to remind us that it'll come back on some agenda. Yeah. Anybody wish to add something to the future agenda list? All right. I've, nope. Ryland's set to talk. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm I, sorry. Yeah, I was looking down. Ryland? I was reading stuff and wasn't listening. Yeah. Um, I'd like to, um, if I can get a, if I can get support, um, I'd like to have at some point before the end of the year, I'd like to get a hear an update from our uh, our youth sports leagues that we're under contract with, uh, being the soccer association and the baseball association. We kind of have a cadence most of the most of the years where we hear from them sometime towards the end of the year and and kind of have a habit of potentially tweaking contracts near the beginning of the year if anything comes from those discussions, and so we're probably due for that. All right, I would support that. For the council or the sports subcommittee? Um, usually they give an, I'm just thinking, you know how Matt Tibbetts has come a couple times and um, John Watson came. I think he was saying come before council. Yeah, and just kind of give, here's where we're at, here's where, you know, if they're looking for anything or vice versa. Hmm. All right. Uh, Eric. So I have some for uh, possibly future agenda. The last, uh, the last four weeks we've had two storms uh, that have come through, a big one came through Friday night. And one of the things that um, we recognized is that it overwhelms our emergency response personnel. Uh, Friday night probably overwhelmed uh, staff as, as well that was assisting. So it, I had already been working on a plan uh, to bring before 
uh, the chief and, and spoke to Chief Carroll about it today. I've spoken with the town manager class about it. And so um, the plan is to start a volunteer citizen response team to assist uh, in emergencies such, such as this. Um, it would be very beneficial uh, for both the chiefs uh, for uh, clearing out debris and storms, uh, assisting with um, uh, single ladies or elderly that need assistance uh, in times of uh, disaster uh, or just heavy rains like we got Friday night. So uh, just want to kind of announce that, but perhaps it'll be a future agenda item as well. I don't know. If so they could only assist ladies? Can assist men. <laughs> well, I know you may. You're you're on that other age. <laughs> hey, I can't get into age. Oh, sorry, sir. I, I just want to make sure that we're clear on what you're asking to do because I don't know that I'd su support what you said. <laughs> yes, sir. Any resident who needs assistance. Oh, I'm thinking time. like uh, you're thinking like a system. someone needs a tree limb cut off their car or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the chief Carroll has has a, a good idea of a direction to take it, and uh, so the plan is to meet further with chief and town manager class and uh, come up with something to present to council. Uh, at and next month is uh, fire prevention month, and so there may be uh, maybe a may be ready to present it uh, in October. All right, anybody else have anything to add to future agenda? All right, hearing none, we will move on. Uh, in just a moment, we will convene into executive session as soon as I read an abbreviated portion of this. Item 17, pursuant to the following designated section of the Texas Government Code, annotated Chapter 551, Texas Meetings Act, the council will convene into executive session to discuss the following. A, consultation with the attorney um, over rules of procedure uh, and the Texas Open Meeting Act, breach of contract issues. Item B, section 551072, deliberation regarding real property to discuss, uh, deliberate the purchase exchange lease of the real property north of State Highway 114, east of Trophy Club Drive and west of town limits. And item C, section 551074, personnel matters to discuss, deliberate or appoint employment eva eva evaluation reassignments, duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer employee. Item one, Animal Shelter Advisory Board. Two, Building Standards Commission. Three, Economic Development Corporation 4B. Four, Ethics Review Commission. Five, Park and Recreation Board. Six, Planning and Zoning Commission. Seven, Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone Number One Board. Eight, Zoning Board of Adjustment. Nine, Municipal Court Judge. Ten, Board of Directors of the Denton County Transportation Authority. It is 8.02, where council will reconvene in the regular session. It is 8.40 p.m. Uh, first item uh, is item 18, consider and take appropriate action regarding repealing previous resolutions that make fiscal year 2017-2018 appointments to the town boards, commissions, and corporation and appointing new resolutions and adopting new resolutions, making annual appointments and reaffirming existing appointments, appointing various chairpersons and town council liaisons to the following boards, commissions, and corporations and uh, providing an effective date. Animal Shelter Board, Building Standards Commission, Economic Development Corporation 4B, Ethics Review Commission, Park and Recreation Board, Planning and Zoning Commission, Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone Number One Board, and Zoning Board of Adjustment. I would recognize Council Member Jensen for various motions. I'll make uh, make this as one motion. Speed the process. Uh, first repeal resolution 2018-01 and approve resolution 2018-17 making the following appointments on the Animal Shelter Advisory Board with terms expiring in 2020. Reappointing Sergeant Tony Simmons to place one. Reappointing Susan Edstrom to place two. Reappointing Animal Control Officer Christian, Kristen Dobson to place three. Reappointing Susan Edstrom to serve as chairperson. Reappointing Mayor Pro Tem Philip Schaffner to serve as council liaison. Reaffirming existing appointments in places four, five, and six. Motion to repeal resolution 2017-21 uh, and approve resolution 2018-18, making the following appointments on the Building Standards Commission with terms expiring 2020. Reappointing Mark Hamill to place one, reappointing John Murtaugh to place two, 
reappointing Jeff Sims to place three, reappointing Jack Orman as an alternate, reappointing Peter Blanchard to serve as chairperson, reaffirming existing appointments in places four and five, uh, Economic Development Corporation 4B, motion to repeal resolution 2018-02 and approve resolution 2018-19, making the following appointments on the Economic Development Corporation 4B with terms expiring in 2020. Reappointing Jared Hall to place five, reappointing Chris Whipple to place six, reappointing Corey McDonald to place seven, appointing John Norberg to place two with a term expiring in 2019, reappointing council member Rylan Rowe to serve as the council liaison, reaffirming existing appointments in places one, three, and four. Uh, motion to repeal resolution 2017-23 and approve resolution 2018-20, making the following appointments on the Ethics Review Commission with terms expiring in 2020, reappointing Corey Williamson to place one, reappointing David DeHaven to place two, appointing Justin Hall as an alternate with a term expiring in 2019, reaffirming existing appointment in place three and alternate position. Motion to repeal resolution 2018-09 and approve resolution 2018-21, making the following appointments on the Parks and Recreation Board with terms expiring in 2020, reappointing Mindy Bone to place one, reappointing Kim Farrell to place two, reappointing Joe Morris to place three, reappointing Dean Murray to place four, reappointing Tiffany Nymphius to serve as chairperson, reappointing Alicia Fleury to serve as the council liaison, reaffirming existing appointments in places five, six, and seven. Uh, motion to repeal resolution 2017-40 and approve resolution 2018-22, making the following appointments on the Planning and Zoning Commission with terms expiring in 2020, appointing Reginald, Reginald Bar Barbarin to place five, reappointing Jeffrey Beach to place six, reappointing Michael Biggs to place seven, appointing Jeffrey Beach to serve as chairperson, reaffirming existing appointments in places one through four, Motion to repeal resolution 2018-03 and approve resolution 2018-23, making the following appointments on the tax increment reinvestment zone number one with terms expiring in 2020, reappointing Jared Hall to place one as a member of EDC, reappointing Michael Richmond to place two, reappointing Cora McDonald to place three, appointing Travis Inge to serve as chairperson with a term expiring December 31st, 2019, reaffirming existing appointments in places four and five, motion to repeal resolution 2017-27 and approve resolution 2018-24, making the following appointments on the zoning board of adjustment, adjustment with terms expiring in 2020, reappointing John Murtaugh to place four, reappointing Jeff Sims to place five, reappointing Terry Curtiston as an alternate, reappointing Jack Orman as an alternate, reappointing Lou, Lou Apipri to serve as chairperson, reaffirming existing appointments in places one, two, and three, and alternate positions with terms expiring in 2019. Do you have a second? Second. All right, motion by Jensen, seconded. Um, I should make I think it. you should repeat the motion, <laughs> well, Mr. Gonna, Kirk, before was, you offer your I second. Was, I was going to about Kirk's. I was going to divide the question, but <laughs> I was waiting to be interrupted in the middle of this. <laughs> You're right. It's a miracle that it didn't happen. <laughs> I know. He leans over and tells me he's going to ask to divide the question. <laughs> <laughs> Make him repeat it all. All right. We have a motion and a second. Uh, moved by Jensen, seconded by Kurtz. All in favor of the motion, show your hands. All opposed, same sign. It is unanimous. It does. Carry. Uh, item 19, consider to take appropriate action regarding the executive session actions. Uh, chair will recognize Councilmember Jensen for a motion. Uh, no, sir. Oh, you don't I'll want to do that? All right. Councilmember Rowe. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion uh, directing staff to uh, post a job requisition for the position of municipal judge um, to be posted until um, October 31st, 2018. Do you have a second? Second. second. Uh, seconded by Kurtz. Motion by Rowe. Uh, any questions about that? All right. Uh, no comments. All in favor, show your hands. It is unanimous. It does pass. It is 847 p.m.